Hey, our review family, keep it, I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morris, the review guy, and I'm back again to bring you another video. Welcome back to my series, I Want to Rant, which this could be technically considered one of them, where I'm just kind of freeform talking about something that interests me in the music industry. And this one was pretty obvious, I feel like, if anyone's been a part of pretty much music in general recently, because it's been very big. And that is the Eminem and Machine Gun Kelly beef. And... Now that it's officially over, supposedly officially over, according to MGK, I felt like I was wanting to give my thoughts on it. And at first, I was wanting to go and just do a reaction to uh, Killshot, do like a track review for that. But I felt like that would have been very biased because I'm wanting to look at this from the perspective of both sides and where I think this beef led both of them, what I think the repercussions will be, and my thought of the kind of step-by-step -step thing. Now, I'm not going to be going in-depth about each individual thing. You guys can look all that stuff up on your own. I'm just going to overall be giving my thoughts on this situation. And I didn't want to just do kill shot because that would have been unfair because I wanted to look at both sides. So this beef's been going on for years. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly has, like, called out uh, Eminem's daughter Haley on like some uh, tweets and I know there's been some back and forth that was kind of vague from everything that I was hearing but it was like little types of uh, jabs thrown basically and it really exploded when uh, on Eminem's new surprise album Kamikaze he released a song called Not Alike featuring Royce to 5-9 and this track even Royce was a bit skeptical after the release and he was a bit pissed at Eminem because of what um, being on that track considering that it was a very harsh track a very kind of controversial and offensive track in which Eminem is calling out uh, Machine Gun Kelly and in a pretty pretty big way and this isn't the only time that Eminem was controversial for calling out rappers that was a huge kind of uh, theme for Kamikaze, because on the song Fall, which is uh, probably the second most controversial song, he's really calling out a lot of people. Uh, he um, calls out Tyler, the creator, for being gay, using some very uh, harsh words, vulgar words. And see, that's the thing about Eminem. He's always been this way, but now he's walking on eggshells because of his career up to this point. He has been this diss track type of rapper. He's been this harsh, in-your-face rapper coming from Detroit, being white, having all of this against him, growing up in this environment where he really didn't have Jack. He didn't have anything on his back. He didn't. He only had his street smarts and the talent that he had naturally. He was pretty much self-taught for the most part until he was able to get into the industry and that's when like Dr. Dre got involved. That's when all of these other rappers that kind of took Eminem, a young Eminem, under their wing and tried to teach him. And it is interesting that now that Eminem has fallen from grace a bit with his previous album Revival being one of the most... Uh, kind of ill-received albums that he's ever released and while kamikaze i rated that album pretty high i enjoyed it and a lot of other people enjoyed it there's been a lot of people that have been saying oh it's a bit um it's kind of weak it's still weak it's not the same as old eminem and this far into his career i don't think we're gonna be expecting to get the old surprise factor eminem because someone can only reinvent themselves so many times until there's really nothing left there's only so much he can talk about but this kind of gave him a bit of a boost and it made people not focus so hard on how revival was and how some of kamikaze was and the controversial tracks on that namely fall uh and focus more on not alike and the beef that was kind of happening which that's similar to how the drake and push t beef went when they were having that beef but uh honestly who won that beef that would that would probably be an entirely different video but so this track gets released, not alike, with Royce to 5'9", and Royce openly says that he did not like being on that track, that he was not fully in the creative process, and that he wished he wouldn't have done it because of the abrasiveness of it. And uh, basically after that, Machine Gun Kelly releases his diss track for Eminem called Rap Devil, which is a uh, play on Eminem's popular track Rap God, and Machine Gun Kelly basically goes in. He 
does a lot. Of, the only thing about Machine Gun Kelly's diss track is he seems to be a little bit too obsessed with certain topics and certain uh, specific like he's really focusing in on certain things and not going out of those boundaries. We're talking about him talking about how Eminem's old. Oh, he's washed up. Oh, man, your albums are as good as they used to be. And then he just kind of focuses on that. And on the chorus, he has this, like, strange auto-tune effect, which I don't think he needs because he doesn't really use it on any other part of the track. But overall, there were some good lines on Machine Gun Kelly's diss track, and it was a very polarizing move because... Uh, the fan bases of both Eminem and Machine Gun Kelly were a bit jumbled because not only were both sides kind of taking their respective rapper that they enjoyed, you had Eminem fans that were saying, hmm, Machine Gun Kelly has a point, and you had Machine Gun Kelly fans saying, no man, Eminem's like the OG rapper, he's the best-selling rapper of all time, you probably should respect him. And you had this huge just train wreck cluster of people that were trying to pick sides as in any beef, but this was really serious. And the thing about this beef that I have to point out is I really do feel like it is genuine. A lot of times these beefs will feel like publicity stunts. They will feel like they're there to gain publicity, to gain relevancy, to gain money, but I don't think that this necessarily was. Obviously it did gain them more publicity and it boosted them up a bit for both sides, but uh, I don't think this was necessarily for that because these really do feel like genuine diss tracks toward each other and they do feel like they really are angry at each other and I can't blame them. I've seen, like I said, there's articles you can read where it goes over a timeline of the beef and you can really go check that out if you want and uh, hear what you want to, uh, I mean, see what you want to see. Well, then um, <laughs> Eminem replies with Killshot, which... It got more, It I'm pretty sure it already has more views than Machine Gun Kelly's, which has over like 117 million as of the making of this video. Pretty sure Killshot has more. And it basically has like Machine Gun Kelly in a picture, and it has like a bullseye, like a target. And Eminem goes in harder than MGK. And this is not me picking Eminem's side. This is not me being subjective. Eminem won the beef because Machine Gun Kelly backed down and said that he wasn't going to do any more. And that's not me saying that in terms of like, oh, Killshot was better. It was objectively better because it stopped Machine Gun Kelly in his tracks. In Killshot, Eminem pretty much just attacks Machine Gun Kelly's diss track as well as Machine Gun Kelly as a rapper and as a young rapper, uh, talking about how like I'd rather be uh, 40, I'd, I'd rather be 80 year old me than 20 year old you, obviously referencing the fact that Machine Gun Kelly was focusing on Eminem's age a lot, how he was washed up, how he was older, his beard's weird, That that's all obviously a meme, and Eminem was coming back with lines like, I gotta, this is the most relevant you'll ever get just because you're using my name as clickbait and I have to give you a career to destroy it. And he's just, he is absolutely going in. He's making fun of appearance. He's making fun of rap. The fact that he's this 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 young type of rapper that will never be him. And how, like, uh, he was selling uh, platinum records. And he was, like, getting so much notoriety back when he was young by the time he was Machine Gun Kelly's age. And it is savage. It is a complete savage diss track. And I think that Machine Gun Kelly did not really think of the fact that Eminem's been doing this his whole life. He grew up in Detroit. 8 Mile was about him growing up, and he's been known to diss track. He's been known to go in. Eminem is at his best. I don't care what anyone says. He's at his best when he's trying to go savage on a topic. It doesn't have to be a diss track. It doesn't have to be something towards another rapper. It can literally be anything that he feels really passionate about uh, and angsty towards, and I think that's where he thrives as an artist, is doing things like this, trying to go in on a topic and really busting walls down, busting boundaries down, and showing that he is savage. And this really does get me excited for future Eminem projects because, like I said, I did dig Kamikaze, and I want him to go back to this type of uh, modus operandi because he he has this genesis qua that I can't place that's just he's better than any other diss track rapper that I've heard but that's not where the beef stopped Machine Gun Kelly went to a uh, concert which became uh, really controversial polarizing and famous on the internet ever since where he was wearing a um, 
a kill shot shirt. He was wearing a kill shot shirt and he was standing with his back to the audience and the audience was like cheering and screaming and like putting up the finger and uh, Machine Gun Kelly had fingers up and he he uh, captioned it. I believe this was a Twitter post and it was like hashtag he missed. And then Eminem, I'm not sure if that concert happened before or after the Eminem interview, but Eminem went on an interview, I forget with who, but he was basically saying, I don't think anything about this rapper. He's a nobody. Do you know how many rappers are better than you? And this was really getting deep. This was getting hard. They were trading back and forth. This felt like a legitimate beef, and it felt like a really deserving and a uh, kind of, I guess... It made sense because Machine Gun Kelly's this younger rapper from this younger kind of uh, trappy audience, and you have Eminem, who's this older veteran that's been doing this for a while, and he's kind of falling from grace, and Machine Gun Kelly's kind of more in prominence, and there's so much like, uh, I guess, diametric opposition that you can really count towards both sides that make this a genuine beef. It's it's not just like, hey, I don't like your music. Well, I don't like your music either. This really feels like they're going after each other, and they're going after each other's lives, and going after each other's appearances, and their music, and their looks, and just everything about them they're really trying to go in at. But then, surprisingly, Machine Gun Kelly uh, said that in an interview, I believe, that he's not going to go any further. And something that I should also um, talk about is, uh, I'm pretty sure in that tweet that he did where he was giving the finger at the concert, uh, he, wa he captioned it like, hashtag let's talk about it. And a video came out of him at that concert uh, doing Rap Devil. And the audience was booing. Some of the audience was booing. Some of them were singing along. Some of them were into it. But some of them were booing. And that really shows how some Eminem fans were even at MGK's uh, concert. And they just did not want to hear that. They wanted to hear MGK. And that's understandable. I mean, I, bringing beef into the concert, I feel like that was kind of a moot point. I feel like you should save that for the studio. Save that for, like, the internet and stuff. Because when people pay money to come see you live, they're kind of wanting to hear your music, which I'm not saying that Rap Devil isn't his music. It's just obviously it has a topic on it that would be polarizing. And I feel like he knew that. I don't think that he necessarily didn't think that's what was going to happen. But um, he comes out, and I forget if this was in an interview or a tweet or whatever, but he, he didn't talk about it. He just said, I can't respond to Killshot. And that won Eminem the beef pretty much. And I'm not saying that MGK is a coward. I think he made the right move because this was going to go too far to the point to where it would have probably damaged MGK's career. And that's just how it is because no matter how bad Eminem gets on a song, like no matter how uh, fallen from grace he can appear, he is popular than any other rapper. He is more popular than any other rapper of all time. Like, statistically, he has more sales, he has more views, he has more notoriety, he's collaborated with more people. And uh, if MGK would have kept going, I feel like that would have damaged his career. And it might have already, it might have lost him some fans, but I don't think that's something he cares about because, he, like I said, he's still a fairly popular rapper. Um, I think that Eminem won the beef objectively because he made MGK back down and... That's something that, um, who do I think won? Eminem, that's who I think won because I feel like, not because I'm like a diehard uh, stan of Eminem, it's just I feel like his diss track had a lot more substance than MGK's, and if you take it in context, it's more powerful, it's stronger, and it has more substance to it. And I just enjoyed Killshot as a track more, like putting aside the beef, I thought it was better. Uh, I love the beat on Rap Devil, I'll tell you that. But um, I just think some poor choices and some poor lyrical moves lost MGK the beef. And Eminem, like I said, he's been doing this his whole life. You can't hope to try to diss track Eminem. That is literally so stupid. That is literally like, uh, I'm trying to find out what I can compare it to. That is like some no-name f-list actor trying to diss track leonardo dicaprio or something like it's like and i'm not saying mgk is that i'm not i, I think he's a uh, he's a good rapper i'm just saying eminem is on such a pedestal that no one can touch him and no matter how hard someone's gonna try even if you have the best lyricist in the game that's even above eminem he's still gonna beat you just because of his fan base and just because he has a way of doing diss tracks that much other rappers that aren't that experienced don't know how to do because he's been doing this for so long. 
and he knows his way around a diss track. He knows how to beat someone. And plus, his fan base is going to back him like hell. He He's not going to uh, fall from grace when it comes to his fan base. I mean, he, he might have lost some uh, fans, or at least some diehard fans with, like, Revival and some of Kamikaze, but at the same time, he's... He apologized for the things that he said about Tyler, the creator, and all that, but he ain't going to apologize for this because I feel like he does feel passionate about this MGK beef, and I felt like I feel like MGK uh, did as well, but I feel like Eminem might have taken it a little bit more seriously because he came out with that fast. You can tell that he put a lot of passion and a lot of work into that. It was hard. It was razor sharp, and um, all in all, he won because he just had the more like stronger track and i want to hear what you guys think of this beef this is a long rant video but there was a lot to go over and i want to hear what you guys think obviously so post in the comment section below what you thought of this whole beef and like comment subscribe it helps me out a lot and i'll talk to you guys next time till then my name is jay morris review guy and i'm signing off saying farewell. well